I call the Honourable Parakura Horomia. Tēnā koe. Ia koutou te haukainga e tai kahatu i konei i te wahi o te whare miere e mihi kaunuka. Ia koutou ngā tū pakeke. E tau toko atu ngā whakaaro e puta a waha a tariana mō rātou ngā korau, ngā kuia pēra ia heni, te wahine kahaki te mahi toi, pēna ia dāsi mō tōna mahi i rote te whare Māori, te tari Māori, me te rā pita e mahi ana tōna mahi i konei i ngā tari. Ia rātou, me koe e stand, ko koe ke te mea orana. Mihi koeana kia koe. Tēnā koe mō tērā e ruhia, koutu kato e wili, a me pakeke e mihi koeana. Tēnā koutu te pāpā e nau, a ko kare e tīmata tū te manuhiri e mihi koeana kia koutu. E tuku mihi ki wēnei, kia te whanaunga a wili, te matua Stan, a meka, a Jody Wiley, mō tō rātou whakatoi ki tō tia tū te mahi nei. Me koutou katoa e mahi atu ngā mahi e tēne atu te tae e whakahuri ki te rangi o tēnei. E tino rangi pai atu tēnei e ki te atu tātou o te whare miere e manaki atu te o te pai. Nō rere tēnā koutou. Ngo rātou e rere atu ngā hinga, pēra ia ere, a huia e tangi hoki te ngākau. Engari mō koutou e orana, ko tēnei nō tō kaha o ronga whakātai e tae atu i konei. Mō he atu tātou ngā kōrolo o te mahi o ngā hoia, e rongo atu koutou ngā tupuna ngā pakopako o ngā pū pēr atu, te mahi ngati. Nō rere, e tautoko tī atu ngā kōrero te tuahine me tātou katoa i kone. Mr. Chair, I want to mention Maeva and Peter Moya and the part of this claim of Ngāori o te kōti o Rikirangi. And certainly his deeds and the reasonings behind them is something that are etched in history. That he was a trader of some knowledge and he was into commerce is something that is very interesting. And that he was put asunder for whatever reason it is indeed uh, great that we are here today to put all that to rest. Um, he traveled away, um, he was imprisoned, and certainly the Ringatu Ha he still survives today and I want to mihi to them and to their uri. And Mr. Chair, before I start, I want to say that it is a great day, and before I forget, mihi to the ministers, to Minister Turia and co, and especially Mr. Finlayson. I always thought Mr. Cullen was the better of the ministers, but I think he might end up being not too bad, actually. And I just want to <laughs> recognise his ability, because he knows I'm going to sit to him about some of these things in here. But I do want to mention him and the officials, because at times they are sorely forgotten. But I do want to mention and, and mihi to him. So, te kōti o Rikirangi, those things and the preserved art forms in several of the houses around the country uh, stand uh, as a signal and a sign to his um, following and his uri who is still surviving. Um, the fascinating thing is in my mind, being a scholar of treaty settlements and understanding most of them, I would say that there is not one worse than this treaty settlement, what the Crown did to the people in this country. And that's not saying because they're sitting in the gallery. It is a fact. This is one of the most dastardly actions ever purported, ever set to upon any iwi tribe whanau in this country. And today that we bring it to rest is something that we should be proud of as politicians. The Haruhi Rukupua was a master carver, and he certainly left his etched signal. And I thought I'd start off here, Minister, with Takahuki Tūranga, uh, just in case I forgot, and the bell rang. Thank you for its return. Thank you for them making sure that it goes back. I was fascinated in the summary here, um, talking about uh, the, what, what would happen and the resources and the support that would go, particularly to relocation. And I think that's great, that it's to be resourced in that. But I do recall when the land and corporations Māori were returned, a lot of the people jumped at it and accepted accepted it. That house has been down here for a long time. So we should consider ensuring that the ongoing costs of running and maintain it are put in here. Because I've read that very carefully. There's a lot of talk about the relocation, resourcing it, but not about the continuation of both preserving it and making sure that people are able to be paid and looked after it. To be frank, because they've shared it with the nation for a long, long time. Um, there are ongoing costs. 
You know, this is amazing, these people, because the Crown set two on them. Tokorti did some interesting things amongst themselves. And for people to forgive that takes a lot of gumption. For people to, to accept that that happened and try to get to a better place amongst themselves, not just with the Crown, is something that they should be respected for. Because that's exactly what they've done. And the thing about history, sad history and bad history, if you look back too much, all you get is a sore neck. And at the moment, it's a great day for them to be here. Prior to 1865, Roma Fakata had full control of all their resources. They were in control of them, they were running the businesses, and they were looking after themselves and the early settlers. When war broke out, Roma Fakata adopted a policy of neutrality, which is fascinating for these people, because a lot, some of them have been branded rebels. I'm not sure which one of them are, which one of them are, some of them. But they were branded rebels. But they took a neutral stance, and it was fascinating that the Crown didn't respect that peace, that they set two on them, not lightly, harder than over in Taranaki, they blasted them. And it certainly shows the enacted military force to take a position, both of lands and resources, and to disenfranchise them, not just from what they had of their own, but also to set up the Empire's flag, to flutter over the top of them and suggest that you're not needed. Well, they've stood the test of time. They're here today. They have a whakapapa, and as I debated last week, when somebody said the Crown is returning their mana, Rongo Fakata never lost their mana, like any of these ewe. Never, ever, ever. And the two scholars over there who were waxing lyrical about that last week need to think again. They never lost their mana. That it was impinged and it was wounded here and there didn't mean to say they lost it. And their Tinoranga Tiratanga has certainly stood the, the test of time. As Minister Turia said, the Crown's attack on Wairagahika, which include a lot, included a lot of women and children, was abhorrent to say the least. It was one of the worst war situations in this country. And the ongoing looting by the military forces after that is something that we need to remember and get rid of. It's a bit like a movie, Romo Fakata's history, because some of them got sent to Chathams with no trial, with no um, conductory courts. They were sent there and locked up. And it shows their tenacity, because they escaped after two years. And if you've ever been to Chatham Islands like I have on the aeroplane, I don't know how the hang they escaped. But they must be pretty smart people to escape. And they escaped. And then other things happen. The summary executions at Yatapa by the Crown forces in January 1869 were the worst in my mind. That people were lined up against the cliffs. That they were torn apart by some overzealous young punks who had come from the empire is something that we need to remember. So, Mr. Speaker, they have been a very brave people, and it's a great day for them to be here, to see the end of it. And that Stan is still living, because they chew his back every now and again, like most, most people in those positions. And Stan is still here out of the four original applicants. And a lot of these people did this for nothing. That's why Minister is serious about the, the funny. There's another matter, Minister, I just want to read in the Crown's Acknowledgement, Part 17. I don't know what it is, it's on page something. Anyway, page 12. The pollution of Turanga waterways by Gisborne sewerage system and industrial waste has had a severe effect on Ongo Fakata, including the loss of many traditional sources of kaimona and blah, blah, blah. And on top of it, it's got about the forestry and the erosion and that. Well, Minister, the sewerage still there. It's getting worse, actually. And as I suggested in the second reading, it's not too late to stump up and that's something that should be put right. And I'd encourage you to nod a bit harder, Minister, because it is, you know, it is a com continued ropatu about that raw sewage pouring out. There's a local authority there. I hope Ming Foon's watching this. We've got a Chinese mayor who can speak Māori. 
Kite atu te paru e tuku e nei roto te taku tai mōna, te ai mention it. I reira kē te pira o te tangata e haere tonu atu. And Mr. Speaker, as I round up, can I encourage you, uh, Minister, to consider that on the way through. Kia ora tata. Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Minister, Chris Finlayson. And our mana and our